you must be correcting as we go. If you have an incorrect answer, you must be correcting. Please do not draw with this red pen because I'll be checking and grading your, uh, your checked work. So do not draw with your red pen, otherwise you're not listening and you're gonna lose some extra points. And then it makes it harder for me to go through and grade it because I see all this red marked, but I can't figure out, are they just drawing or are they indicating that something is incorrect? So if you have an incorrect answer, like say number one is incorrect, you're gonna use your red pen to draw a little dash through the number and then a line through the incorrect answer. Then you're gonna go to your separate sheet of paper that has your name, number, and date at the top. You're gonna write number one and you're gonna write the correct answer. If it is a problem that, we, that you have to work out, then you're gonna write the number and you're gonna write, okay, 476 plus 329, and then you're gonna work it out with us. So if it is just a word or a one answer um, correction, then you just write that. But if it is a question that you have to work it out, it's an addition or subtraction problem or a word problem, then you need to do all of the work on that piece of paper where you are correcting. I need every single person's corrected uh, piece of paper to be turned in with their review, even if you didn't have any corrections to do. If you are at home, I am trusting you not to fix answers because I need to see that red pen on both papers. I am trusting you not to do that because that would be considered cheating. If you go back and fix with your pencil, that would be considered cheating. And I think that you know that. Okay, so right now, if your name, number, and date is not at the top of page 121, do that with your red pen right now. If your name, number, and date is not at the top of page 121, do that with your red pen right now. After the first quarter, it's not just minus one point, it's minus five. So do not forget name, number, and date. Yes, sorry, quickly. If the date that we finished it's on, is that fine? Yes, or whatever day, um, whatever day you start on homework or whatever, that's the date that you put and you just leave it like that. Okay, so the directions for page 121 say use the vocabulary words in the word bank to fill in the blanks. So number one, the blank states that for any number, zero plus that number is the number. Ethan, what is the answer to number one? The identity property of addition. Identity property of addition. If you have just identity property, that's okay, but just know that we're about to get into some other properties and it's not gonna, if they're gonna have the same name, except they're not gonna be of addition. So make sure on your test, everybody listen. On your test, you need the whole thing. You need every single word. That should be easy unless you're just trying to get done quickly, which is not what we do. Okay, good, Ethan. Number two, a blank quantity is an amount whose value needs to be found. Michaela. Unknown. Unknown. unknown, good. An unknown quantity is an amount whose value needs to be found. Number three, the blank states that the order in which two numbers are added does not change the sum. Kingston. I can hear you. Not associative. Which property has that keyword order. 
if you go to the key concept box and you listen to what I said, you have all of the keywords for each property circled or boxed or underlined or whatever we did. I can't remember, but we did go through in those properties. We circled, we indicated the keyword. So order was the keyword for this property of addition. And that's Aaron. Smith, can you help him out? The community property. Commutative of property of addition. Commutative property of addition. If you spelled any of these words wrong, then you can add the letter in on your review. You don't have to spell it on your, if you have the correct term, you just misspelled it, you do need to fix it on the review, not your extra sheet of paper. If you have the correct answer, you just misspelled it, then you need to correct it on that piece of paper. Because, again, if you are copying, your answer should look exactly the same with capital letters in the same places, punctuation in the same places, spelled correctly. If you do not spell a word from a word bank correctly, you will lose half a point because the word is right there. So if you misspelled a word that is in a word bank, I've said this before, you lose half a point. That includes today with this review. Okay, number four, the first number in a subtraction sentence from which a second number is to be subtracted is the what, Carla? The menu. Menu end. Menu end. The min you and remember the most important part of that sentence is the first number in a subtraction sentence. We know the first number in a subtraction sentence is the minuend. Remember, if you got your, the answer incorrect, make sure that you used your red pen to write a line through the number and then a line through the incorrect word. And then on your extra sheet of paper is the correct answer. Do, if you turn it in to me and I don't see anything fixed on the review, but I do see answers on that extra sheet of paper, well then you're not following directions, so you're gonna lose points. So make sure if you get an answer incorrect, you put a red line through the number and then a red line through the incorrect answer to show me, hey, look at the extra sheet of paper, that's where the correct answer is. Number five, the blank states that the grouping of the add-ins does not change the sum. Cullen. Associative property of addition. The associative <laughs> property of addition. And Cullen, what's the key word that tells us right away that it's associative property? Grouping. Grouping. Grouping is the key <coughs> word that tells us right away it's associative <coughs> property. Order is the key word that tells us right away it's commutative property of addition. And zero is the key word that tells us it's identity property of addition. Okay, number six. A number that is subtracted from another number is called the what, Zari? The subtrahend. The subtrahend. The subtrahend is second. It is the number that is subtracted from the other number, the minuet. Okay, number seven, a blank is a symbol, usually a letter, that is used to represent an unknown quantity. Zadie. A variable. Variable. Correct, 
A variable is a symbol, usually a letter, that is used to represent an unknown quantity. Make sure that you have these words spelled correctly. Okay, number eight. A blank is a sentence that, it, that contains an equal sign showing that two expressions are equal. Victoria. An equation. An equation is a sentence that contains an equal sign showing that two expressions are equal. Okay, make sure you have that whole page corrected. Ethan, are you paying attention? Do you have that whole page corrected? Yes. Make sure that if you got one wrong, you have a thin, a just a little red line through the number and a thin red line through the incorrect answer. And then on your separate sheet of paper, you have the number and the correct answer. The whole correct answer, not just part. Yes, Zadie? If we spelled something wrong, do we have to count off one? Um, don't worry about minusing points, I'll do that because then it just gets confusing because you guys don't know exactly how much, but you will lose half a point if you misspell it. Okay, so for numbers nine through 12, the directions say find each unknown. Write the addition property or subtraction rule that each shows. So, some of you were like, I don't know what it's asking for. Well, if you look at lesson three, no, lesson one, in the independent practice, in the guided practice, we did the exact same thing. All you did was what is the unknown, which property or subtract, which addition property or subtraction rule does that problem show? So number nine, we have 35 minus blank equals 35. Well, Zadie, first. What is that unknown? That blank, that little square, represents what number? Zero. Zero, because 35 minus zero would equal what? 35. 35. So that was the first part that you needed. If you do not have that the unknown is zero. You need to put a line through the number nine, and then you need to go to your separate sheet of paper <coughs> and indicate, bless you, that the unknown is zero. Okay, Zadie, what property or subtraction, what addition property or subtraction rule does this problem show? Identity. Is this the identity property of addition? Is there such thing as an identity property of subtraction? So can this show the identity property, Zadie? No. Because is it addition? No. It's subtraction. So it can't show an addition property, which means we need to write the subtraction rule that this problem shows. Who can help her? What subtraction rule does this problem show? Kingston Loudly. I can't hear you. Zeros in subtraction. If you have subtraction rule, you need to use your red pen to cross out subtraction rule and then go to your separate sheet of paper and write either zeros in subtraction or if you have this, you are correct. Something like when you subtract zero from an, or when zero is subtracted from a number, the answer is the number. If you have either zeros in subtraction or something along those lines, when zero is subtracted from a number, the answer, the answer is that number. Then you are correct. But if you have subtraction rule or identity property, then you are incorrect and you need to draw a line through it and write either zeros in subtraction, well, or when you subtract zero from a number, the answer is the number on a separate sheet of paper. Yes, Kingston, quickly. Did you indicate what the unknown is? On your paper, do you have what the unknown is? Do you 
you have what the unknown is. So are you incorrect? No. As long, like I said, Kingston, as long as you have indicated what that unknown is by either writing square equals zero, just writing zero, or by rewriting the equation 35 minus zero equals 35, then you have indicated what the unknown is, so you are not incorrect. The only reason you would be wrong is if you don't have the zero at all, or if you said that the unknown was something other than zero, or if you have identity property, or if you just have subtraction rules. <coughs> Okay, number 10, 16 plus 5 plus blank equals 16 plus 5 plus 10. Ethan, what is the unknown in this problem? 15. Good. The unknown is 10. Because we have a 10 over here, so we need a 10 over here. What property or subtraction rule does this equation show? The associative property of addition. What symbol tells us right away we're working with associative property? What symbol will we see in the problem that tells us we're doing we're using the associative property? Can you show me what they look like with your hands? Good. What is that called? These things. What are they called? Zari? Parentheses. Parentheses. So what are they called, Ethan? Parentheses. parentheses. Good. If you see parentheses, well, that should give you a clue. Hey, I'm working with associative property. If you see a zero, that should be a clue. Hey, I'm either working with the identity property, if it's addition, or I'm working with zeros and subtraction, if it's subtraction. Number 11, 83 plus 35 equals 35 plus what, Zari? What is that unknown? The unknown is 83. 83, and what addition property or subtraction rule does this problem show? Commutative property Commutative of addition. Commutative property of addition. Commutative property of addition. Remember, what you're looking for to figure out if it's commutative property is what you're looking for the same add-ins, just flipped. Because commutative is the order, which just means they're flipped. Associative is grouping, parentheses show grouping. And number 12, 76 plus zero equals blank. Carla, what is the unknown in this problem? The unknown is 76. 76. And what addition property or subtraction rule does this problem show? It shows in addition the property. The identity property of addition. Of addition. Because for identity property, we're looking for a zero and an addition sign. For zeros in subtraction, we're looking for a zero and a subtraction sign. Now, I said out loud many times, if you want to figure out how to solve this, go back to that lesson. It was your job to figure out which lesson, but all you had to do was look for the word property. We had key concept boxes that told you exactly what each one was. If you did not do that and you just guessed and you got it wrong because of that, well, that is why you need to use your tools. I can't tell you exactly where to look because you have to figure that out on your own. If I just tell you where to go every time, is that going to help you to find it on your own? No. But if you look back at lesson one at the independent practice, this is exactly the same thing. 
we did the exact same thing. And I kept telling you, go back to the lesson where we learned about the properties and look because in the independent practice, we did the exact same thing. That's part of study, is figuring out where you need to look to find the answers that you need to find. To find the steps, to find examples, to find how to solve it. Okay, the directions for number 13 and 14 say write each number. Number 13 says 10,000 more than 25,953. Cullen, what place do we need to look at in our number 25,953? 10,000. The 10,000's place. And if we're doing 10,000 more, we have a 2 in the 10,000's place. If we're doing 10,000 more, how many are we going to add to that 2? 1. So the 2 becomes a? 3. Do any of the other digits change? Yes. They do? What do they change to? Zero. Is this number, 30,000, 10,000 more than 25,953? If we subtracted 25,953 from 30,000, would our answer be 10,000? No. No. Why? What did we, what did we do incorrectly? Can somebody help her out? What did we do incorrectly? Victoria. We rounded. Is that what we're doing here? Are we rounding? No. How do we fix that, Victoria? What should we have done differently? So should we have changed all the rest of those digits to zero? No. What should we have done with the rest of those digits? Keep them the same. Again, we had problems exactly like this in lesson two. There was just a different number here. So again, use your tools. Go back and look, especially when you don't have to, uh, especially when you are allowed to. On a test, you're not allowed to, but on the review, you are. So make sure you're doing that on the review and when you're studying and when you're doing IXL, so that you already know how to do it when you go to your test and you can't look back. Use your tools. Don't be lazy and just try to guess because you want to get finished. Because your grades will show that. Number 14, 1,000 less than 63,035. Victoria, what place do we need to look at? The thousands place. And if we're saying, we have a three. If we're saying 1,000 less, what do we do with that three? Do we add one or do we take one away? We take it away. So that means, what digit do we have in the thousands place now, Victoria? Two. Two. What happens to all the rest of the digits? They stay the same. So 1,000 less than 63,035 is what, Victoria? What? 30 what? 35. 62,035. Again, it's a pattern. The same thing happens every time. You either add one or you take away one in whatever place they're telling you to look at. The same thing happens every single time. Look for the patterns in math. You're just using a different number. So if you went back to lesson two and looked at what you did, it's a pattern. You're going to do the same exact thing just with this number instead of the numbers that we use in lesson two. Okay, so make sure if you got any wrong that you used your red pen to draw a line through the number on the review and the incorrect answer on the review. And then on your extra sheet of paper, you wrote the number and then the correct answer next to it with red pen. Okay, helper number two, please sanitize, erase, sanitize. Okay, so everybody listen because this is gonna be a little different. Numbers 15 and 16, we did not do that lesson. So, 
I said, try to do it in your head. If you cannot do it in your head, show your work. So, I said, show your work on your separate sheet of paper. Listen, do not do anything yet. This is the answer for number 15, the answer that you should have. Do not do anything yet with your red pen. This is the answer that you should have. 4,585. Now, if you showed no work and you got this answer, well, you're correct. If you showed no work and you did not get this answer, if you showed no work because you tried to do it in your head, but you did not get 4,585 with your red pen, write okay. If you showed work and did not get this answer, well, then you lose a point. So if you showed your work and did not get 4,585, then right now you need to draw a red pen, um, use your red pen to draw a line through 4,585 and the number 15. If you did not show work because you did try to do it in your head, but you did not get this answer, well, then you still need to draw a line through 4,585, but you can write okay. Any questions on that? Zadie. Um, I put 4,584. Then that is incorrect because Silly mistakes because you're rushing. Are they correct? Can we count them as correct when they are not correct? No. no. So that is incorrect. If you make a mistake because you're going too fast or you're not paying enough attention, well, then you lose points. That's part of checking. That's part of slowing down, tr not trying to be the first one done. I have several people in this class that try to be the first one done, and it is really affecting your grades. Okay. <laughs> So, but now, if you did not show work, whether you got it right or not, go to your separate sheet of paper, your new one, and we're going to do number 15 together. So, every single person, unless you showed work and got it 100% correct, go to, your number, go to your separate sheet of paper, and we're going to solve this together. Now, if you do not listen to what I just said, you will lose every single point that this problem is worth. Even if you have it 100% correct. If you do not do what I'm saying right now, as in you did not show your work, but you got the right answer, but you're not going to your separate sheet of paper to show the work, you will lose every single point. Follow directions. Okay, so we have 4,529 plus 56. Kingston, help me out. Where do we start? What place do we start in? The ones. We have nine plus six. What does that answer? You can use your fingers, but you guys have to start getting to where you can do this in your head. I don't mind if you use your fingers, but you've got to be able to start moving faster. So what's nine plus six? 15, but we can't write 15, so we have to regroup the 1 to what place? The 10s. Okay, Kingston, step 2, add the 10s. We start with what we had originally, 2 plus 5. Plus 1. 7 plus 1, come on. What is it? 8. Next step, add the hundreds. We have five plus nothing <coughs> equals. Bring down the comma because they always line up. Four plus nothing is four. So 4,585. <coughs> Bless you. Okay, number 16, 506 plus 349. The answer you should have gotten was 855. If you did it in your head and got 855, well, then you are correct. But you're going to come to your separate sheet of paper and solve it. 
If you did it in your head and did not get 855, well then you need to write okay with your red pen next to 16, but you still need to cross out that incorrect answer. If you showed your work and did not get 855, then you need to put an, a line through number 16, a line through your incorrect answer, and then solve it to the side. So number 16, 506 plus 349, and I've lined up all my places. So if you solved it in your head, whether you got the right answer or not, you need to be showing this on your separate sheet of paper right now. If you did it, if you showed your work but you got the wrong answer, well then you need to be on your separate sheet of paper writing this down. Okay, Michaela, step one, we add the ones. Six plus nine is 15, but we can't put 15, so we have to regroup the one to what place? The tens. Now we add the tens. We start with what we had, zero plus four is? Plus our regrouped number. Step three, we add the hundreds, five plus three is? So we have the answer 855. Okay, so for numbers 17 through 18, I'm sorry, 17 through 19, the directions say add Estimate to check your work. So everybody right now, if you did not, we're not gonna go through estimating to check work. So if you did not do that, then you need to write no checking minus three. If you did not check your work, then right next to the directions for number 17 through 19, with your red pen, you need to write no checking minus three because you did not follow directions. Okay. Yes, Sadie? Um, you want us to put minus three if we just... When we get to subtraction, we'll talk about that. If you did what? If we did, if we checked on two of them, but we didn't check on one of them, do you want us to put minus one? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's minus however many you did not check. And that is not, that's making silly mistakes because it's really easy to check with estimation. So if you didn't do it, it was just not following directions. So you lost some easy points there. Yes, Victoria, quickly. Can you write it on the side or do you have to write it? No, you write it next to the directions. Just like I did here. Add, estimate to check your work, no checking minus three. Um, yes, Carly. Um, I accidentally forgot to check one. Okay, so that's exactly what I just said. No checking minus however many you did not check. So make sure that you're listening, Carla. Uh, when I'm speaking, your hand needs to go down so that okay. you think about what I'm saying, not what your question is, okay? Because I just answered that question. Zadie had that question, I answered it out loud. Okay. okay, so if you did not check, you need no checking minus however many you did not check. Okay, number 17, we are adding. Now, I'm gonna do this. The answer to number 17, I'm gonna erase this, should be 103,304. If you do not have 103,304, you need to put a line through number 17 and a line through the incorrect answer. Then, you need to come to your separate sheet of paper and solve it with us. So if you do not have 103,304 for number 17, draw a red line through the number and through the incorrect answer, and then go to your separate sheet of paper to solve it. Now when you go to your separate sheet of paper, you're not just writing the correct answer. You're solving it with us. Does everybody understand? So you, if you got that incorrect, you have a red line through number 17, you have a red line through your incorrect answer, and now you're going to your separate sheet of paper to rewrite the problem exactly as it appears. Number 17, 82,600, I'm sorry, 267 plus 21,037. And that is what you have done. Now let's solve. Carla, for addition, step one is to do what? Step 
one is to add seven plus seven. Every single time, like even here, step one would be to add seven plus seven? No. So what is step one? How do we correctly say what step one is when we are adding? No matter what the numbers they are, what do we do first? We add seven plus seven in. Okay, five. Carla, again, what you're telling me is that even for number 18, I would add seven plus seven. I'm asking what is step one anytime we do addition? We don't add seven plus seven, we add the what? One place. We add the ones place. Now, does that make sense if we go to another problem? Where I say yes. step one is add the ones. Does that make sense? Yes. But if I said step one is to add seven plus seven and then I go to number 18, does that make sense? No. no. So make sure that when I'm asking for the steps, you're telling me the exact, the step. Not what numbers are there, what digits are there. You're telling me the step. So step one is to add the ones. Well, yes, we have 7 plus 7. What does that equal, Carla? 7 plus 7 equals 14. Okay, we can't write 14, so we have to regroup the 1 to what place? The 2 place. Okay. Okay, guys, I know I said you can use your fingers, and that's okay, but you've got to get faster at doing these little uh, one-digit uh, one digit addition problems, okay? Okay, Carla, step two, we add the 10 plus. 10. We have, let's start with what we had originally. 6 plus 3 is? 6 plus 3 is 9. Plus 1 is? 10. Well, we have to regroup the 1 to what place? The 100th place. The 100th place. Step 3. Step 3 is to add the hundred place. Add the hundred. We'll start with what we know. Two plus zero is? Two plus zero equals two. Plus our regrouped one? Plus one equals three. Three. We're going to bring down our comma because it always lines up. If you are not putting commas, you need to use your red pen to put commas. You have to have the commas. Okay, Carla, step four. Step four is to add the 1,000. Add the 1,000. Okay, we have 2 plus 1. What does that equal? 2 plus 1 equals 3. Good. Step 5. Step 5 is to add the 10,000. Okay, 8 plus 2 is? 8, 9, 10. 10. Now, do we need to regroup that 1 and put it up above something? No. No, there's no more places in our add-ins, so that means I can just go ahead and write 10 at the beginning of the number. So, Carla, 82,267 plus 21,037 is what? It equals 10, 10 hundred. Not 10 hundred. What is it? What is that number, Carla? 10 hundred. It's not 10 hundred. It's not 10 hundred. We would never say 10 hundred. Remember, cover up everything after the comma. What number is that? 103,000. Then we say the name of the period when we get to the comma. So we have, Carla, listen, you're trying to go too fast. Let's go step by step. First step, cover up everything after the comma. And what number do we have? 300. And we cover up everything after the comma, and we have what number? 103,000. Then we get to the, Carla, you're going too fast. We're doing it one step at a time. We cover up everything after the comma, and we have 103. Then we get to the comma, and we say the name of the period. What's the name of this period that we just finished? Thousand. Then we cover up everything before the comma, and we say the na that number? 304. We have, we're at the end of the number. Do we say the name of the period when we get to the end of the number? No. No. So this is the number 103,304. Remember how to say those numbers. Okay, number 18. We have 432,901 plus 177,235. 
The answer you should have is 610,136. So you should have 610,136. If you do not have that, use your red pen to put a line through number 18 and a line through the incorrect answer. And then go to your separate sheet and rewrite number 18, 432,901 plus 177,235. If you are not doing this, I'm telling you step by step exactly what to do. So if you are getting answers wrong and you are not doing this, you will lose every single point. You will not get to keep the points that you would like for showing work. You will lose them all. You will lose the points for the checking. If you are not following along and doing what you were supposed to do, you're going to lose every single point that that question would be worth. That means you lose the point for checking, even if you checked. You lose the point for showing your work, even if you showed your work, because you're not following directions. Okay, Zadie, step one when we add is to do what? Add the ones. Add the ones. We have one plus five? Six. Good. Step two? Add the tens. Zero plus three? Three. Step three? Add the hundreds. Nine plus two? Eleven. We can't write eleven in one place, so we regroup the one to the? Thousands. Thousands. Now, what do I do next? Before I even move to the thousands, what can I go ahead and do? Put, put a comma. Why? What happens in addition and subtraction that I know where to put my comma without even having to count? They always line up. They always line up. Commas always line up in addition and subtraction. So I can just go ahead and put my comma down without even having to count digits. Okay, now step four. Add, add the thousands. Add the thousands. We start with what we had. Two plus seven is? Plus that regrouped one? Ten. Ten. We can't write ten, so we have to regroup the one to the? Ten thousand. Good. Step five? Add the ten thousand. We start with what we have. Three plus seven is? Ten. Plus the regrouped one? Eleven. But we can't write eleven, so we have to regroup the one to the? Hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. Step six? Add the hundred thousand. Start with what we had. Four plus one is? Five. Plus our regrouped one? Six. So that means 432,901 plus 177,235 is what, Zadie? 610,136. Good. Okay, Victoria, you're going to help me with number 19. We have 206,522 plus 321,877. Everybody listen, the answer you should have is 528,399. So you should have 528,399. If you do not, put a red line through 19 and your incorrect answer. And then go to your separate sheet of paper and solve that problem. If you have an incorrect answer because you made a silly mistake, you still have to cross it out and solve the problem on your extra sheet of paper. Okay, I hope you're doing that, otherwise you just lost all the points for that problem. Okay, number, uh, so let's see, Victoria, step one when we are adding. Two plus seven is, step two. 2 plus 7 is step 3. Add the hundreds. 5 plus 8 is 13. But we can't write 13, so we regroup the 1 to the thousands place. Now, what can we do before we move on to the thousands? Kind of like step 3 and a half. We put the comma because they always line up in what two operations, Victoria? I've said this a bunch of times. Is that an operation, commutative property? Michaela? Addition and subtraction. Remember the properties, addition, subtraction, addi uh, multiplication, division. In, multiple, in addition and subtraction, the commas always line up. Multiplication and division, they don't. 
but addition and subtraction, they always line up, so we can do it without having to count three digits. Okay, step four. We start with what we had, six plus one, plus one, eight. Step five. Add the 10,000. Zero plus two is two. Step six. Two plus three is five. So that means, Victoria, 206,522 plus 821, 877 is 528,399. Okay, number 20 through 22, the, uh, the directions say subtract, use addition, or estimation to check. If you did not check any of those problems, then you need to write no checking minus three if you did not check at all. If you checked two but forgot to check all of them, then you put minus one. If you only checked one, you write minus two. You write no checking minus however many you did not check. Some of you that are losing points for this are the same people that lose points every time for not checking. So that means you're going too fast. You know how to check. You're just going too fast. You're not taking your time to make sure that you do it correctly. Ethan, put it on my desk. Okay, number 20. 54,751 dollars minus 43,226 dollars. Your answer should be 11,525 dollars. If you do not have a dollar sign, if you have 11,525 but you don't have your dollar sign, use your red pen to write your dollar sign in front of 11,525. If you do not have 11,525, put a red line through number 20 and a red line through your incorrect answer. Then go to your separate sheet of paper and rewrite <coughs> number 20, $54,751. Minus $43,226. And then we're going to solve. Michaela, step one when we subtract. Subtract the ones. Can we, we have one minus six. If we have one ones cube, can we take away six? No. no. So what do we need to do? We need to look at what place? to see if there's something to regroup. I have a five, is there something to regroup? Yes. yes. So I need to take one 10 away. How many 10s do I have left? Four. And I need to regroup that one 10 as how many of what? Ten. 10 ones. I had one one, I'm adding 10 more. How many ones do I have now? 11. 11. Now if I have 11 ones, can I take six away? Yes, 11 minus 6 is what? 5. Use your fingers if you have to, but you also have to get faster at this. Well, we know 6 plus what would equal 11? 5. So that means 11 minus 6 has to be what? 5. Five. Now, Michaela, step 2. Subtract the 10s. I have four tens, can I take two away? Yes. Because four minus two is what? Two. Step three, I have seven hundredths, I wanna take two away, can I do that? Yes. Because seven minus two is what? Five. Make sure that if you're having to check that you're doing it with us, not waiting till the end. So make sure you're writing as we go. Now Michaela, before we move on to step four, what can we go ahead and do? Before we move on to step four, what can we go ahead and do? We can bring down our comma because they always line up in addition and subtraction. Now, step four. The 10,000s, am I gonna skip a place and go to the 10,000s? Subtract the thousands. So I have four minus, I have four thousands, can I take three away? Four minus three is what? Step five, 
I have five ten thousands. Can I take four away? Five minus four is? And then my very last step is to do what? Put my dollar sign. So 11,525. If you checked using addition and you did not get 54,751, but you didn't try again, well then you did not use your tools wisely. Because if you check using addition and you don't get but $54,751, that means you need to go back and do it again. <coughs> Otherwise, you wasted a lot of time doing that for nothing. Okay, number 21, 9,004 minus 632. Your answer needs to be 8,372. If your answer is not 8,372, then you need to put a line through the number 21. You need to put a line through your incorrect answer. And then you need to go to your separate sheet of paper and write 21, 9,004 minus 632 with your red pen. And then we need to solve. Smith. I forgot, I already picked your stick. What is step one when we are subtracting? Subtract the ones. So we have four ones can, and we want to take away two. Can we do that? <coughs> yes. Four minus two is? Two. Step two. Subtract the tens. We have zero tens. Can we take three away? No. So we need to move to what place? The hundreds place. Do we have something to regroup in the hundreds place? No. So we need to move to what place? The thousands place. Do we have something to regroup in the thousands place? Yes. Yes, I have nine thousands. How many do I need to take away? One. So if I take one away, how many thousands do I have left? Eight. Eight. Now what do I do with that thousand? Carry it to... I regroup it? To the hundreds place. I regroup it to the hundreds place because I can't skip places. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean if I regroup it to the hundreds place? What am I doing with that thousand? You're adding... I'm not adding, Ten. I'm regrouping it as, I'm taking that 1,000 and I'm regrouping it as? 10 hundreds. 10 hundreds. So I had zero hundreds, I'm adding 10 more. How many hundreds do I have now? 10. 10. Now, does that help me take three tens away from zero? Yes. It does? So now I can take three tens away from zero tens? No. No, but what did it help me do? What am I able to do now? Regroup. I can regroup. So I am looking at what place? The hundreds place. How many do I need to take away? One. So I have how many left? Nine. And I need to turn it into what? Ten tens. Ten tens. So I had zero tens. Now I'm adding ten more tens. How many do I have now? Ten. Ten. Now I have ten tens. Can I take three away from that? Yes. Ten minus three is? Seven. Good. Step three. Subtract the hundred. I have nine hundreds. Can I take six away? Yes. Nine minus six is? Three. Before I move on to step four, what should I do? Bring down the comma. Good. Step four? Subtract the thousands. Eight minus nothing is? Eight. So 9,004 minus 632 is? 8,372. Good. Okay, number 22. The answer should be? Seven thousand four hundred twenty-four. 
The answer should be 7,424. If you do not have the answer, 7,424, put a red line through number 22 and a red line through your incorrect answer. Then rewrite number 22 on your extra sheet of paper. Number 22, 70,909 minus 63,485. And solve it with us. Kingston, you're going to help me with this problem. Step one when we're subtracting is to do what? Subtract the ones. We have nine ones. Can we take five away? Nine minus five is four. Step two. I have zero tens. Can I take eight away? Yes. If I have zero tens, can I, or can I take away eight? No. So what do I need to do? Go to the hundreds place. I have a nine. Can I regroup there? I can't hear you. Yes. So I need to do what with that nine? What do I need to do with those hundreds? How many do I take away? So how many do I have left? Eight. What do I do with that, with that 100 that I took? I turn it into how many? Ten. Just one? So this zero becomes one? No, because I'm not turning it into one ten. I'm turning it into how many tens? Ten tens. I started with zero tens. I add ten more. How many do I have? Ten. Now I have ten tens. Can I take eight tens away? Yes. Ten minus eight is what? Two. Two. Guys, come on. We got to go faster. We're missing out on reading time right now. Okay. So now step three, Kingston. I can't hear you. Subtract the hundreds. I have eight hundreds. Can I take four away? 8 minus 4 is what? Four. Now, before I move on to step 4, what should I do? Bring down our comma because it's going to line up. Now, step 4. Subtract the thousands. I have zero thousands. Can I take 3 away? No. So what do I need to do? Go to the 10 thousands place. Do I have something to regroup there? How many 10 thousands am I going to take away? So how many do I have left? Six. What do I do with that one ten thousand? Turn it into ten thousand. So I had zero thousands, now I'm adding ten. How many thousands do I have now? Ten. Ten. Can I take three thousands away from ten thousands? Ten minus three is? Seven. Step four, I'm sorry, step five. Subtract the ten thousands. I have six ten thousands. Can I take six away? Six minus six is? Zero. Do I need to put zero at the beginning of a number? No. So 70,909 minus 63,485 is? 7,424. Okay. Make sure that you have checked that. Make sure you have all the correct answers either on your review in pencil or on your extra sheet of paper that you got out today with red pen. Helper number two, please sanitize, erase, sanitize. Okay, so we're going to look at number 23. We're going to read it once to find the question. Then we'll read it again to find the pieces of information we need to answer the question. Mrs. Van Horn will publish 1,045 recipes. She has published 632,000, I'm sorry, 632 of them. How many more recipes does she need to publish? So there's our question. How many more recipes does she need to publish? Cullen. Is there a piece of that problem that tells us what operation we're doing? Yes. What part of that question tells us what operation we're doing? How many more. How many more? And how many more tells us we're doing what? 
Subtracting. Subtracting. Now there's always going to be a part that tells us the unit. So what unit are we, do, are we going to see in this problem? Recipes. Recipes. And so recipes will tell us the numbers that we're looking for. Because we're looking for numbers that represent the unit, which in this case is recipes. So Colin, let's read the question sentence by sentence. You're going to tell me what piece is important. Mrs. Van Horn will publish 1,045 recipes. Do we have something important there? Yes. Yes, we see our unit recipes. We see a number right before it. So our first important piece of information is what? 1,045 recipes. 1,045 recipes. Now, are we looking for a word that tells us what operation to do in this problem? No, because our question already told us. So if our question tells us what operation to do, we don't have to look for a word like that in our problem. Next sentence, she has published 632 of them. We don't see the word recipes, but of them means what? Recipes. Recipes. So what's our next important piece of information? 632 of them. So 632, because of them means recipes. Otherwise, what else would it mean? Is there anything else that of them could mean other than of these recipes? No. No. So, Colin, first we have to put the equation. If you did not put the equation on your line, use your red pen to do that. And you will lose points because I've said it too many times, and I said it too many times as we were working. So, Colin, what does our recipe, I mean, our uh, equation look like? We know we're subtracting, right? Because how many more told us? Subtract. So which number has to go first in a subtraction problem? 1,000. Every single time, no matter what subtraction problem it is? Mm -hmm. Which one has to go first? The bigger one. The bigger number, which in this case is? 1,045. 1,045. We know we're subtracting. What's our subtrahend? Six, 632. 632. And then we have our equal sign. Now, if you solved the problem here, you did not follow directions. Because where were you supposed to solve these problems, Cullen? On um, your extra sheet. On your extra sheet of paper. So now go to your original extra sheet of paper and find number 23. If you do not have this answer, you are incorrect. So that means you need to put a line through number 23 and 413, and you need to go to your uh, separate sheet of paper, your new one, your new separate sheet of paper, and rewrite the problem. 1,045 minus 632. If you have 413 as your answer, then just follow along. If you do not have 413, you need a line through 23, a line through your incorrect answer, and then you need to solve it on your new piece of paper that you got out today. Okay, Colin, we have 1,045 minus 632. Step one. Subtract the ones. Five minus two. Three. Step two. Subtract the tens. Four minus three. One. Step three. Subtract the hundreds. Zero minus six. Can't do. Can't do it. So what do I need to do? Go to the thousands. Okay. I'm going to the thousands, and then what am I going to do? Regroup one. So I do what? What does that mean I do with that thousand? So same, we're using the same language we've used every time. <coughs> the pattern. We start out when we're regrouping, we, who can help her out? It's the same language, same order of words every single time. When we're regrouping, what do we do? We go to the ten thousands place and we do what? Michaela? We don't cross it out. We never use that language. Victoria? We take one away. So how many do I have left? Zero. I've been using this, these same words since lesson four. 
maybe, no, lesson six. I've been using these same exact words. We've had nine lessons, and since lesson six, I've said, okay, we're in the 10,000s. We take one away. How many thousands do we have left? Zero. What do we do with that thousand? I'm using the same exact language I've used every time. Regroup to the... How? How do we regroup? If I just say the word regroup, does that tell you what to do? Does that tell a brand new person what to do? No. So I take my thousand. What do I do with that thousand? I'm using the same language. Give it to the... I don't give it anywhere. I turn it into... 100. I turn it into 100. Who can help her out? I'm using the same exact language. Zadie, I take my 1,000 and I turn it into what? 10 hundredths. 10 hundredths. I had zero hundredths. I'm adding 10. How many do I have now, Cullen? 10. 10. Now I have 10 hundredths. Can I take six away? Yes. 10 minus six is what? Four. Four. Next step. What do I do? Subtract the thousands. I have zero thousands. <coughs> I'm taking none away. How many do I have left? Zero. Zero. Do I need to write a zero at the beginning of the answer? No. So that means 1,045 minus 632 is? <coughs> 413. And so the answer to the question, how many more recipes does she need to publish, is? 413. Am I done? Needs to publish. What? 413 what? Not needs to publish. That doesn't tell me the unit. Recipe. Recipes. So if you do not have the unit, write it with your red pen. If you don't have the equation and you don't have the answer with the unit, use your red pen. You will be losing points because I've said it too many times. So I hope you have the equation, the answer 413, and the unit, and then your work shown to the side. If you are not correcting, you will lose every single point that this question would have been worth because I'm telling you exactly what to do. So if you are not correcting, you will lose one, two, three, four points. Even if you have all uh, three out of the four correct, you will lose all four of those points. Okay, number 24. We're going to read it once to find uh, the question. And then we're going to read it again to find what we need to put uh, to solve the problem. Parker had $32. He earned $10. Then he bought a video game for $28. He also received $10 for mowing the lawn. How much money does he have left? Write an equation using a variable for the unknown. So there's two parts to this question. How much money does he have left? and write an equation using a variable for the unknown. Zari, is there any part of that question that tells us what operation we're doing? Yes. There is? What, que what part of that question tells us what operation we're doing? No. What part? No. no, I wanna know, what part did you think? Because I wanna tell, we, well, we need to talk about why we thought, why you thought that. <laughs> what part of that question did you think told us what operation we're going to do. Does she have? Does what? he have? Does that ever, have we ever seen does he have? Carla, put your hand down. Have we ever seen does he have tell us what operation to do? No. No. So is that, does that tell us the operation? Do no. we see how much more or how much less or how many more or how many less Something like that, or in all, or all together, or anything like that? No. No. Do we see anything like how much do they still need? No. No. So do we have anything in that question that tells us what operation to do? No. No. We especially know that because we have write an equation using a variable for the unknown. Well, every time we've had to write a variable for the unknown, what type of problem are we going to do? Is it a one-step problem like this? No. No, it's, it's a multi-step problem. So that means we're not going to find our operation in the question. We're going to find it in the rest of the sentences. 
But what will we find in the question? We'll find what we need to, um, well, we will find what we need to, um. So guys, listen. Every single question, we've only looked for three things, but mostly just two. We've looked for the word about to see if we need to estimate. Do we have about, Zari? No. We look for the words that tell us what operation to do. Do we have any of those? No. What is the only other thing that we've looked in the question for? You can look at the question before to see it. It's a pattern. We do the same thing every single time. So eventually I won't have to tell you what we're looking for because you're going to know, okay? We don't have about, so we're not doing that. We don't have anything that tells us what operation to do, so we don't have that. Well, the only thing left that we look for is the what? Sorry? Equation. Not equation. Carla? The unit. The unit. We look for three things in a question. About, something to tell us the operation, the unit. We don't see about, we don't see something to tell us the operation. The only other thing we ever look for, Zari, is what? Unit. Unit. So guys, remember that so that I don't have to lead you to this because eventually it's going to get to the point where I'm only prompting you on the new information, not the old information that we already know how to find. So Zari, we always have something that tells us the unit. What word tells us the unit in this question? How much money? What word? Money. Money, because we're looking for whatever's after how much, how many, whatever. So our unit is money, but are we looking for the word money? No. No, we're looking for a? Dollar sign. Dollar sign. So let's go through and let's find the words. Uh, let's find the numbers with our unit and let's find the words that tell us what to do with that number. So first sentence, Parker had $32. What's, what's important in that sentence? $32. $32, that tells us the number. What else is important in that sentence? Had. Had, because had tells us what? That, that's the starting number. That's the starting number. So we start, we're going to go down to our equation, we're going to start with $32. If you do not have $30 as your first equation, you need to show that. You need to put that down. If you don't have $32 as the first part of your equation, you better be doing that with your pencil. Kingston, I see you don't have anything. So you did not finish. You did not follow directions. You did not do your homework last night. So that is a consequence because you were supposed to finish. You know how to finish these if you go back to the lesson. If you don't go back to the lesson and you just stare at it, you're not going to be able to solve it. And so that's probably what happened. You've got to go back to the lesson and think about what we said. Zari told us, had $32, tells us where we start. So on your line, why are you not writing this? Okay, Zari, next sentence. He earned $10. What's important about that sentence? $10. Is that it? Earned $10. Earned $10. If we earn money, do we end up with more or less than what we started with? More. So what are we doing with this $10? We're adding it. So then on our equation, we need plus $10. Okay, next part of the question. Then he bought a video game for $28. What's important about that sentence? Bought, bought a video game with $28. Bought a video game for $28. We have our number $28. Bought, if we buy something, do we have more or less money than what we started with? Less. So what are we doing with $28? Subtracting it. So then our next part of our equation is minus $28. Make sure if you do not have this that you are writing it. Okay, next sentence. He also received $10 for mowing the lawn. What's important about that sentence? Sorry. He, earned, he received, received $10. Received $10. If you receive money, do you end up with more or less than what you started with? No. $10. $10. He received $10. That okay. means he's gotten more. More. So what operation are we doing? What are we doing with that $10? What are we doing? 
we're adding it. Plus ten dollars. Okay, sorry, do we have any other sentences between that and the question? No. So what does that mean? Do we have anything else to add to the equation? I, I thought it was in to be able to do we have anything I else? Hear you. Okay. Do we have anything else to add to the equation? No. No. So what do we need to do? Are we done writing the equation? No. What do we need to do now? We need to do our equal sign equals. and and then we put our variable. Good, because our answer is the variable. If we had seen he earned some money or he spent some money. That means our variable is part of the equation. But since we didn't see that and we're trying to figure out how much he has left after all of these things happened, our variables are answers. Ari, what would you like to use for the variable? I used an actual variable, M for money. Okay, M for money. So she used a letter, which almost always variables are. So we have $32 plus $10 minus $28 plus $10 equals M. Now, as long as you have a variable in the equals place, then I don't care what it is, but you needed a variable. If you do not have a variable, then you need to use equals m. Okay, hey, Zari, what do we need to do now? Either we go to our separate sheet of paper, we go to our separate sheet of paper and, and start adding it. We solve on our separate sheet of paper every time. You were not supposed to solve here. I said it too many times if you did, you're going to lose points for not following directions because I can tell you right now I'm probably not going to be able to read your answer. So, right now I'm going to tell you M equals $24. So if you do not have M equals $24, then on your new piece of paper, you need to solve this problem. So Zari, when we go to our separate sheet of paper to solve multi-step problems, do we just write one piece at a time? No. No, we write the entire equation, including the variable. $32 plus $10 minus $28 plus $10 equals M. I hope that people are checking if they need to because otherwise you're going to get a lot lower than you could have gotten because you're going to lose every single point if you're not checking. Okay, sorry, when we're solving multi-step problems, what do we do first? What direction do we solve? Left to right. Left to right. So what's the first part of this problem that we need to do? 32 plus $32 plus $10. Good. $32 plus $10. What are we going to do with minus $28 plus $10 equals M? We're going to bring it down. We're going to bring it all down. So now, Zari, $32 plus $10. Do we need to set that up, up and down? No. No. $32 plus $10 is? $42. $42. Now we need to bring down minus $28 plus $10 equals M. Okay, what part are we going to solve next, Sorry. <coughs> Zari, what part are we going to solve next? You're still muted. If you're talking, you're still muted. $42 minus $28. And then what do we do with plus $10 equals M? We'll bring it down. We'll bring it down. But $42 minus $28, can we solve that sideways like that? No. No. So let's come to the side in your extra space. And we're going to set it up how? S sideways. Sideways, but we have it sideways Wait, right up here. And down. Up and down, good. 42 minus 28. Well, 2 minus 8. Can we do it? No. No, so we have to go to the tens place and take how many away? It was to We're going to take 10. 
One. One. So how many tens do we have left? Three. And we turn that ten into what? I couldn't hear you. We turn that ten into what? Sorry, we turn that 10 that we took away into what? I can't hear you. Okay. okay. We turn we took away 110. We're going to turn it into what? Into 9. What? Into 9. We took away 110. So instead of having 4 tens, now we have 3 tens. But we have to take that 10 and regroup it into what? Into 10, ten ones. 10 ones. We started with two ones. We're adding 10 more. How many do we have now? 12. 12. Now, 12 minus 8. We can do that, right? Four. 12 minus 8 is 4. Okay, now subtract the tens. Three minus two is? One. One. So that means $42 minus $28 is what? Twelve. And fourteen dollars. Fourteen dollars. We're going to bring down the rest of the equation. Plus ten dollars equals M. What part do we solve next, Zari? $14 plus $10. Do we need, and what do we do with the equals M? We'll bring it down. Do we need to solve 14 plus 10 up and down, or can we just do it by looking at the places? We could just look, look at it. Good, so $14 plus $10 is? $24. We're gonna bring down equals M. Do we have anything else to solve? No. No, we already know our variable M equals $24. So, how much money does Parker have left? $24. Good. We know M equals $24 because we solved it, so Parker has $24 left. On the line, you needed to have the equation with the variable, and then you needed to say what does the variable equal. So, make sure you have those two parts. Okay, number 25. Helper number two, please sanitize the rain. Okay, number 25. We're going to read it once to find the question. And then we will read it again to find the parts that we need. Abby won 57 points on her first turn in a game. She won 37 more points on her second turn and then lost 19 points on her third turn. She won some more points on her fourth turn. Now, Abby has 100 points. How many points did she win on her fourth turn? Write an equation using a variable for the unknown. Explain your thinking to a friend. So, first, the question. How many points did she win on her fourth turn? And then write an equation using a variable for the unknown, and then explain your thinking to a friend. Remember, if it just says explain, that means you can show work. But if it says explain your first step, or explain how you solve the problem, or explain your thinking to the friend, then you have to write your thinking out in words. So that means this had three parts. How many points did she win? Write an equation with a variable and explain your thinking. So that's three parts to this answer. So first, let's go through and figure out what we need. Colin, you did one recently. So let's do huh. Sorry, you just fit. Okay. So let's go back through what for. Let's look at our question. Does our question tell us what operation to do? No. No. There's no how many more, how many less, in all, all together, how many do they still need, whatever. We don't have anything like that. So, 
What does that mean? Where are we going to find what to do, what operations to do, Smith? We'll find it in the problem. In the rest of the problem, good. But what does our question tell us to look for? The unit. The unit. So what is the unit in this problem? Points. Points. <coughs> so that means we're looking for numbers that represent points. Zari, are you good? Okay. Okay. So, Smith, let's go through again. We know we're looking for numbers that represent points. <coughs> and we're looking for words that tell us what operation to do. So... Abby won 57 points on her first turn in a game. What is the important information in that problem? One fifty-seven points. One fifty-seven points. We know 57 because it has the unit points afterwards. Now, 157. Normally, if you win points, do you end up with more or less than what you started with? More. More. So we would add. But in this case, that would mean we'd have to have zero, which is what she started with. Because when you have points in a game, you usually start with none, right? So, Smith, would we need to do zero plus 57 to start out our problem? Pay attention, please. No. No. So we can just start with what? 57. 57. Okay. So we're just starting with 57. Even though we don't have had, we have one. We know that would mean we'd be doing zero plus 57. We don't need that zero plus. So make sure you have 57 to start out with. If you don't, use your red pen. Please make sure that you are paying attention. Some of you are zoning out. That's not gonna help you very much on your test. Okay, Smith, let's read the next sentence. She won 37 more points on her second turn and then lost 19 points on her third turn. Well, what's the first piece of important information in this problem? One thirty-seven more points. One thirty-seven more points. Because we know 37 more points. That's the number that represents our unit. Okay, if you win points, do you end up with more or less than what you started with? More. So what are we doing with that 37? Adding. Adding. So 57 plus 37. Then the next important piece of information, so there's her first turn, 57. Her second turn, she added 37 more. Now the third turn, what happened? What's the important piece of information? Lost 19 points. Lost 19 points. So we know 19 is our next number because there's our unit. But if you lose points, do you end up with more or less? Less. So what are we doing with that 19? Subtracting. Subtracting. Because first turn, she, she got 57. Second turn, she added 37 more. Third turn, she loses 19, so we're subtracting. Now, okay, let's go to the next sentence. She won some more points on her fourth turn. Smith, what's important about that? Won some more points. Won some more points. Do we know how many points she won? No. So what do we need to do to indicate that we don't know that part yet? Use a variable. What would you? What did you use for your variable? I used a C. A C. Okay, and then once we figure that out, well, she won them, so what are we doing with whatever that number is? We're adding. We're adding it because she won them. Now, Abby has 100 points. Remember, if we see has or had at the beginning, that means that's where we start. If we see has or had at the end, what does that mean, Smith? If we see, listen, if we see has or had at the beginning, that's where we start. If we see it at the end, that's the opposite side of the problem. So the opposite of start is, what's the opposite finish. of start? Huh? Finish or end. Finish. So 
If in the end we have has 100 points, where does that go? Before or after our equal sign? After our equal sign. After, because if we have, everybody listen. I said this a few times, but I think some of you did not think about it or didn't really listen. Because, listen, everybody eyes and ears on me. If the beginning of your problem says has or had, and then a number, that's where you start. If the end of your problem says has or had, and then a number, that's where you end. The end of an equation is whatever's after the equal sign. So if at the end of the problem you have has or had, that means that number goes after the equal sign. Okay, Smith, so this should be our equation. Everybody's equation should look like this. 57 plus 37 minus 19 plus variable equals 100. If it, is do if it does not cross out your incorrect equation and the number 25, and then with your red pen, write the correct equation on the line and then go to your separate sheet of paper and solve. But Smith, no matter what, where did we need to solve this problem? On our separate sheet of paper. Good, we're trying to figure out what C equals, so we need to go to our separate sheet of paper, so everybody should be looking at their separate sheet of paper. And do we just rewrite part of the problem, Smith? No. No, we rewrite the whole problem. So we have 57 plus 37 minus 19 plus variable equals 100. <coughs> and Smith, how do we solve? <coughs> what direction do we Open solve down. in? Sorry. Oh, left to right. Left to right. So we start with what? 57 plus 37. And then what are we going to do with minus 19 plus C equals 100? Bring it down. Bring it down. Okay, first we need to solve 57 plus 37. Is that easy to solve sideways like this? No. No, so we need to go to the side in your extra space and set it up how? Up and down. Good. Okay, add the one, seven plus seven. 14. Regroup the one to the tens place. Add the tens, five plus three. Eight. Plus one. Nine. So after her second turn, she had how many points? 94 points. But we're not done because now we need to bring down minus 19 plus C equals 100. Hey, Smith, what part do we solve next? 94 minus 19. And what do we do with plus C equals 100? Bring them down. Bring them down. Okay, again, can we solve this easily sideways like this? No. No. So we need to go to the side and set it up. How? How we do we write it up and down? Up and down. Okay. So subtract the ones. Four minus nine. Can we do it? No. No. So we need to go to what place? The tens place. And we need to do what? Take one away. So if we have nine tens and we take one ten away, how many do we have left? Eight. Eight. And what do we do with that one ten? Turn it in to ten ones. Good. So we had four ones. We're adding ten more. How many ones do we have now? Fourteen ones. Fourteen ones. Now, can we take nine away from fourteen ones? Yes. Fourteen minus nine is... 30. Are you sure? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 9 minus 5. 14, 5, good. Now next step, subtract the 10s. 8 minus 1 is 7. So that means 94 minus 19 is 75. 75. Okay, we're going to bring down plus C equals 100. Now, Smith, normally what we would do next is 75 plus C, but can we do that if we don't know what C equals? No. No. So what do we have to do to figure out 75 plus something equals 100? 
What do we need to do? Do the number behind the equal sign so 100 minus before the variable. Good. 100 minus 75 because we know 75 plus something has to be whatever 100 minus 75 is. So let's solve. Solve the one. Zero minus five. Can we do it, Smith? No. So we need to move to the tens place. Do we have something to regroup? No. So we need to move to the hundreds place. Do we have something to regroup? Yes. What do we do with that 100? Take one away. Okay. So we took 100 away. How many do we have left? Zero. What do we do with that 100? Turn it into 10 tens. Good. We had zero tens. We add 10 more. How many do we have now? 10. 10. Does that help us solve zero minus five? No. No, but now what can we do? We can go to the tens place and regroup. Because we have 10, what do we do? Take one away. Good, so now how many tens do we have left? Nine. And what do we do with that one ten? Turn it into 10 ones. Good. We had zero ones. Now we're adding 10. So how many do we have left? 10. Good. 10 minus 5? Five. 5. Subtract the 10s. 9 minus 7? 2. Subtract the 100. 0 minus nothing? 0. So that means C equals what? 25. So that means Abby won how many points on her third turn? I'm sorry, fourth turn? 25 points. 25 points. So you need to make sure that you have the equation with the variable 57 plus 37 minus 19 plus C equals 100. On the line, what the variable equals, C equals 25 points. And then we're ready for number 26. Okay, 26 is a word problem. So that means we needed to read it once to find... Someone hasn't gotten to do one in a while. Carla, you haven't gotten to do one in a while. Um, so Carla, we have a word problem. We need, it, we need to read it once through to find what? Carla, we have to read our word problem once through to find what? Before we try to find any pieces of the problem, we need to figure out what? The question. The question. Very good. So let's read it and let's find the question. Rick drove 12,363 miles in his new car the first year he owned it. He drove 15,934 miles the second year. How many miles altogether did Rick drive these two years? So, Carla, what is our question? Our question is how many miles altogether did Rich drive these two years? Good. Now, do we have anything in our problem that tells us what our uh, equation is? I'm sorry, what our operation is? Yes. Yes. What word or words tells us what our equation is? I mean, our all operation? All together. All together. Very good. When we see all together, it means we're taking two groups. We're combining them into one, which means what operation are we doing, Carla? Addition. Addition. Now we know the question is also going to tell us what. We know it's going to, it can tell us the operation if it's, and then we know it's just one step, but it always tells us what? The unit. The unit. Very good. What is the unit in this problem? The unit is miles. Good. So that means we're looking for numbers that represent miles and we know we are going to add them together. So Carla, let's read it again. Let's find the important information, the pieces of the problem. Rick drove, we're going to read it sentence by sentence. 
Rick drove 12,363 miles in his new car the first year he owned it. What's important about that sentence, Carla? But what's important in that sentence is that Rick drove. Just tell me the important pieces. To no, remember, so we don't need to know what he did because we already know. Our question tells us what operation we're doing. So we already know we're doing one step. So we don't, we don't need to know any other words other than the part that tells us what we need for the equation. 12,000. 363 miles. Good. So that's the first part of our equation, or that's one part of our equation. The next sentence, he drove 15,934 miles the second year. Carla, what's important about that sentence? <coughs> sheet of paper you needed to solve. So Carla, we have to figure out our equation. We don't have a line to write the equation on, but we still needed to know it in order to solve. We know we're adding, so does it matter what order these two numbers are in? No. No. So we can just go ahead and write it in the order that they give it to us. So we're not going to write it side. We don't have to write it sideways. It would help. But we can go ahead and write it up and down on our separate sheet of paper. If you did not show work for this problem on your separate sheet of paper, you need to do that on your um, new piece of paper today because that's what you were supposed to do. You're not supposed to show work for word problems <laughs> on your review because then I can't read anything or on your homework. So number 26, Carla, what does our equation look like? We can just do it in the order because it's addition. So what's our first added? Our first add-in is 12,363 miles. Good. Except we don't have to write miles when we're just doing the equation. But what's our next add-in, Carla? What are we adding to 12,363 miles? 15,994. Right, is it 994? Miles. Is it 994? Look at the number. 934. 934. Make sure to check that. And we're adding them. So Carla, step one, we add the... We add the ones. Three plus four is... Seven. Don't need to do any regrouping. So now we move on to step two, which is to... Six plus three. Every single time? What's step two every time we add? We add the? We add the 10 place. Okay, six plus three is? Six plus three equals nine. Nine. Now I notice that I have two numbers that have 97 at the end. That, not, that means I'm not gonna stop. I mean, I can't. But even still, I'm never going to stop just because I'm like, oh, okay, that has to be it. Because then, are you solving the problem or are you getting the practice? No. No. Okay, good. So, Carla, step three, we didn't have to regroup, so we can move on to step three, which is what? Step three is to, step three, add the hundreds. Add the hundreds. Three plus nine is? Nine, 10, 11, 12. 12. Now we do have to regroup because we can't put 12 in the hundredth place. So what do I do with that one? You take that one and put it in. We regroup it to the. We, we regroup it to the one thousand place. To the thousands place. Now what can I do before I move to step four? In addition and subtraction. You supposed to. Not forget to put down your comma. Good. Okay, now I can do step four, which is what, Carla? Add the hundreds. Not you add the thousands. Add the thousands. Good. I have two plus five, which is? Which is two plus five equals seven. 
plus our regrouped one is eight. Eight. Now step five. Now eight, I can nine, see nine, that I only eight. have one that has eight, two, nine, seven at the end, but should I stop? Carla, should I stop no. and just say that it's D? No. No, because what if I get something different in the tens place, which then means, hey, I did something wrong, I better go back and check it. That's why you solve it all the way to the end, even if there's only one option left, you still <coughs> solve to the end just to be sure. So Carla, step five is add the ten thousands. One plus one is two. So that means how many miles did Rick drive altogether in two years? He drove two. Not two. Twenty-eight thousand two hundred ninety-seven miles. Is that an option? Yes. Yes. Which option is that? D. D. If my answer was not an option, does that mean I would just pick the closest one? If my answer is not an option, would I pick the closest one? Zadie. No. No. What does that mean? You did something wrong, you need to try again. Because these questions tell you the, they give you the answer. It is not a trick, one of the options is the answer. Okay, so the reflect and the review, I will be grading individually. Okay, you're gonna take these home along with your homework and your math book to study. So for right now, I need them back tomorrow, every single page. I'm gonna come around and staple before we go to um, Spanish. So those of you at home, you can staple them, but please make sure that you have the review on the top facing up. Then you have the reflect facing down. So you need to staple them in the order they would come in the book, 121. 122 on the back, 123 on the front, 124 on the back. Then, underneath that, staple your original work that you showed, the one that you showed in pencil. What goes underneath the two pages from the book is the page that you showed your work the other day in pencil. Then at the bottom is your paper with your, um, your checked work that you did today, the red pen. So the red pen is at the bottom, whether you used it or not, but everybody, I don't think there's anybody that would have gotten a straight 100. So if you did, you might need to check to make sure that you actually corrected everything. Then, so on the bottom is your, is your checked with red pen. In the middle is your uh, check or your showed work with pencil. Then page 123 and 124, then 121, 122. Okay, Zari, what's your question? Quickly. So you want us to send our. You um, will send all the one of that. that we... Yes, every okay. page. Page 121, 122, 23, 24, your original work that you showed in pencil, and your checked work in red pen separately. Okay. okay, so girls at home, just hold on for a second because if we have some time.